We got a Sunday show for you. And we're short on time. And that's not a euphemism. We're literally short on time. Is souls here on planet Earth. And I thought we'd get right into the 1775 Bible because I've got lots of stuff to do still. It's Sunday. Apparently there's playoff games in a few minutes, which I hope you guys will enjoy. Get away from the negative world for a little while and watch some people beat the friggin' hell out of each other, right? Who's going to win? I don't really care. Guys, I got the book of 1775 Revelation. This is the Revelation of St. John the Divine. And I thought we'd start reading this. My brother Hilly Billy was going over it yesterday on his channel. And I was intrigued because I've never read Revelation before. As you guys know, I'm taking all of this in as we go. I'm so glad to have you here. And I'm glad to have this Bible and be able to share it with you guys. Now, yes, you guys could read the Revelation that's in the NIV. You could read Revelation that's in any of the Bibles. There's actually versions that are printed old Bibles they're printed online. You can read them that way. But to have an actual 1775 Bible and read it in Old English to you, I think it's cool because over the last 248 years, there have been many translations of this. And so we go back to a very early translation. So there could be things that are different. There could be things that are completely different. And I'm almost hoping that there are a couple scholars out there that can give us some in input Sage has been hitting us with some really, really powerful insights. If you guys go check out my Romans read of Romans 13 that's on YouTube, right below it, Sage hit us with a bunch of different quotes from the Bible that I'm going to probably go back and read for you guys, give you a little bit more context. But I'm thankful to have you guys out there shining a light on what these verses mean. Because sometimes I'm reading in Old English and I don't have the full perspective because I'm doing this live in the moment. That's the other thing I want you guys to understand. You may not agree with one of my takes on something here in this Bible, but I'm reacting in real time to what I read. I've never read this before. Zabrowski, can we get a woohoo? Woohoo! Right? You know, like you were here, and then all of a sudden you got Zabrask. Uh Bubba said spellings back then are totally different. Tell me about it. Some of the words here. It's like, what am I reading? So let's get into this. I, I know right before the revelation of St. John the Divine, there is a general epistle of Jude, and I started to read this, and I was like, dang, this is pretty powerful stuff in itself. So let me start with this. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's, I mean, maybe I should, but let me start with this. 1775 Bible reading of the General Epistle of Jude. Welcome to Sunday on the Mark Inspire Show. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, Yahashua, and brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Yahashua Christ, and called mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needed for me to write unto you and exhort you, and ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before an old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciousness, I don't know what that is, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord, Yahushua Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which... Now, that's interesting. The Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards he destroyed them that believed not. Aren't we always wondering what happened to the... Like, to the real, the Egyptians with the mummies and all these people that were doing some amazing things thousands of years ago. That's interesting. You know, the flood is universal. Every single continent talks about a flood. Then we know we have the, I think it's the early driest period where it's like 12,500 years ago, we had like 400 f feet of rise very, very quickly because of all the glacier melt. So, something to be said. Something to be said about that little, little verse right there. So here we go. And the angels which kept not their first estate 
but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in them like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Listen to that again, guys. Giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh means, you know, getting some strange. They're talking about getting some strange in the 1775 Bible. Pretty cool. I mean, you know, you're going to be burning in hell, they said. I'm just saying, it's cool they're talking about getting some strange. But the strange gets you eternal damnation. Just so you know. Anyway, here we go. Likewise, also, the filthy dreamers defile the flesh despite dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst thou bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally is brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam, and the gainsaying of Kor. Faw, oh, man! Guys, listen to this. This is like, you got to try to connect things to where you are in your life, right? Gone the way of Cain, the evil, right? And ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor, gainsaying of self. Oh, man, we're living in a world of S-E-L-F, not of G-O-D. Powerful stuff right there, guys. This is the general epistle of Jude from the 1775 Bible. Do me a favor and smash that screen. Share if you can. Let people know the 1775 Bible is live right now. You guys have all seen the secret of the 1775 Bible with the 13 months. It's in this book. So, back to it. There are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Yahushua Christ. How they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts, mocking you for believing still, Mocking you for having a connection to the creator of everything. Right here it tells you what we're living through today. These that be separate from themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of Lord Yahushua unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto them that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wife God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Thank you for being here with me for a little Bible study Sunday with the 1775 Bible. This is as exciting as it can get to read the Bible. A Bible from 248 years ago. Only wise God. Oh. You're right, the F is an S. To the only wise God, our Savior. Thank you so much, Bubba. You just fixed me on that. And that's why I tell you guys, when I'm reading Old English, sometimes F's or S's, sometimes there's an F, there's several F's in a letter, in a word, and it's an S and a C, and you have to figure out what is going on. <laughs> you know, the crazier thing is, is, it's not like there aren't S's in the Bible. There are S's everywhere in this Bible, but for some reason they felt it necessary to spell it with these S's for F's and F's for S is weird, but I'm doing my best 248 year old document 
reading it in real time for you. Never have before, so stick with me as I do it. And I'll need people like Bubba, my brother Bubba News. Guys, if you please give a subscribe to Bubba, subscribe to Joanna Maynard, and anybody else on my, my channel that has their own stream, please support my family community here. These people are all awesome. We're all trying to make the world a better place. And each day we do it in our own way. Each, each day we show up in order to open our hearts, but also to provide some sort of light in a world that has nothing but darkness. So if I could do that through reading Revelation or reading any of these verses within the 1775 Bible and have you realize that this is just a connection to the bigger picture. Well, this is cool. It brings you to the show that they've been hiding from you for five years. A show that's live for us to connect twice a day. The entire world has a show that's live every day of the year on Christmas, Easter, birthdays, everything. I'm here. The question is, do you know it exists, and do you want to stop in and hang out and see what the hell we're doing? Because I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have some fun together. That's the key. So let's get back to it. Revelation of St. John the Divine. First words. Chapter 1. The revelation of Yahushua Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew into his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Yahushua Christ and all things that he saw. I hope you guys understand. I, I call him Yahushua because that was his original name when he walked the earth. The Catholic Church changed his name to Jesus Christ over, the, over t translations. But I always will consider that that humans decided to change his name. Man decided to change his name from what it was to what they decided it should be. So I'll always reference him when I can. Sometimes I miss it and I still say Jesus. But whenever I see Jesus, I'm switching that in the moment to Yahushua. Because that was his real name. I hope you guys don't mind. But I said something to someone the other day because I put this out as a clip. And I saw these comments. Oh, when I met Jesus, I called him by his name over and over. And that's the name he responded to. So it's Jesus for me. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You could call him whatever you want. But I, I just think it's a little weird when people criticize me calling him his actual name. I'm like, it can't be worse to call him his original name. It's just, that doesn't make any sense. Call him Jesus if you want. But you can't get mad at people for wanting to call him his original name and then say that that is somehow worse than calling him Jesus Christ. That makes zero sense. Search your heart on that one. Call someone by their name, and if you want to change the name and people go by that, it becomes the standard. Okay, but then telling people who are calling him by his actual name that they're wrong, it just doesn't make sense. You could say, no, I do what I do because he, he knows how I feel. He can sense my in intention. Okay, that's fine. But don't tell the guy who's calling him Yahushua or Yeshua or Yeshua, whatever they decide that they think his original name was, that that is somehow wrong or worse than calling him a name that was made up by man. Okay, just that's how I feel about it. And like I said, I could be totally wrong. I could. But when I search my heart, it says his name was Yahashua. And to me, that sounds a lot more powerful than Jesus. Jesus sounds like a good name. It's a cool name. But if you put them next to each other and you're like, one of them has a power. It says in here, his name has power. And one of them was made up by human beings a couple centuries later, 1,400 years later. It's like the year 1400, guys, he became Jesus. He was the IS, um, he was all these different names before, but his original name was Yahashua. And I don't know, I made a joke about it. When I come back in 500 years, if someone says, Magagugi Gaga, and I'm, they expect me to answer them, I don't know who that is. My name is Mark, you know? And so if someone at that time is calling me Mark and then someone else is calling me Magagugi Gaga, I'm probably gonna, not going to condemn the guy calling me by my original name. I'm just saying. Um, and from Yahushua, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from the sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. All the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Faith, the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. 
I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Yeshua Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos. For the word of God and for the testimony of Yeshua, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamus, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Where is Philadelphia? It's not the United States. It couldn't be. This is done thousands of years ago, guys. And I turned to see the voice that spake to me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, his white as snow, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, if they were burned in a furnace, and his voice as if it was found on many waters. Oh my goodness, guys! And his feet like unto fine brass, which is brown, guys, brown, gold, brown, and as if it were burned in a furnace, and his voice as if it was found of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was of full shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell to his feet as dead. And he said, Right hand up to me. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. That's the first chapter. We're going to have to do more of this. This is a very early translation. They've translated the King James so many times. Um, this is the second translation after the 1769. So, And I almost had a 1769 about two months ago. I wish I'd gotten it. Ugh, it kills me I didn't pick it up. But now we have, we have this one here. It's... Um, very special to me because of the story behind it. That 1769 was somebody who's they had it in their family forever, so it's okay. But like this one is own it was owned by Stephen Howell, who fought in the Revolutionary War with George Washington. And to me, I would rather take this over one that's five years earlier, uh, six years earlier from 1769, because that one's just some families, you know. And look, maybe that one had a, a family history where that person was in the Revolutionary War, too, but I, I didn't get that far, unfortunately. Uh, but still, we have a 1775-1776 New and Old Testament. Right now, and this is just for clarity's sake, this uh, New Testament is all 1776. So we're really reading 1776 uh, scripture here. And we were in this very moment while this was being printed fighting for our freedom in America against the Brits who printed this book. So I find that to be very interesting. In here we see right before the New Testament that uh, the original owner, Stephen Howell, purchased this in 1783. So for about five, six years, yeah, he was bought in 1783. There was some other information here I just can't see. It's But you see in this top corner, it says 1783 there, bought 1783. But there was other stuff here that he had written and it's it's now too it looks like it may have even been done with a pencil or something cuz it's it's all disappeared and of course as you know on the next page you see their family de genealogy which was kind of common for the time where you see the entire Howell family right here so that's what we have here 1776 new testament and guys there's lots of cool things in this bible there is an, a ta table of kindred and affinity here on the last page which many may have i'm not sure where it talks about a man may who he can marry and who he can't marry i always thought that was kind of interesting a man may not marry his grandmother his grandmother's wife his wife's grandmother his father's sister's mother's sister so they go through a whole list all the way down the line oh i see i told you i may have to get going Just let the cars fall with me. One more day, one more day. Just keep hiding. 
one more day You let the cards fall away song talking to the grim reaper last night <laughs> guys we do it all here go songs talking to the grim reaper lift each other up with a touch the stars right if you guys are interested in my music type in mark pyres on spotify it's free to listen to me there's 209 songs and a new album coming out very soon so let's get back into the revelation of saint john the divine this is chapter two and we're gonna get into it all right if you can hit the screen and do a little share this is the 1775 Bible that you've seen. I am the owner. I read it all the time. So make sure you let people know and hit the like, the follow, and join us on YouTube. That's where the family's kicking it. Here we go. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things faith he hath holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden sticks, candlesticks, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast thy, left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will, re will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Now, is that... Hilly can answer this for us. He will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Is he saying get rid of that church? Because I think he said that the church is where the candlesticks. Is that correct? I don't want to have to go backwards to read. And, but I'm pretty sure he said that the candlesticks are the churches. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, which are thou sawest, are the seven churches. Yes, so the seven. He's saying if you don't follow my law then I will remove your church out of his place, and thou, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicola Nicolantines, Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoa! Who hates? Who is reading? Is this God's word through John, or is this John saying he hates the Nicolaitans? Nicolaitans. Okay, thank you so much, Hilly. So it is Nicolaitans. Um, is he saying that he hates the Nicolaitans? That's God saying it, or this is John the Divine saying that he hates the Nicolaitans? I need help with that. Hilly's the man. Hilly, guys, if you don't know this, Hilly has his own chats, awesome chats, but he also reads the Bible and prays for people. So make sure you subscribe to my brother Hilly. Um, and yeah, I appreciate God's word through John. Okay, so God is word through John. I don't know if John was implying his own animus here um, or if this was actually God saying that he hates the Nicolaitans. But let's keep going and see where it goes. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit's faith unto the churches. The Spirit faith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things faith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them, which they say are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast same. Oh, the devil shall cast some of you into poison, into prison. It's hard to see this. Let me move my microphone a little. Get some more light. 
Get a little sip of my coffee here. Reading the 1775 Bible. Ronnie! That's our brother Sage, guys. So good to see you, pal. <laughs> Barella wants me to do some comedy or improv. Um, we're going to finish... We'll finish up this one passage here. I think that's probably enough Bible for the day. And then we'll move on to something that's a little bit more um, uplifting than Revelation. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Um, and again, we can make comedy out of the Bible very easily, but I don't know if I want to do that. I sometimes wonder, I'm like, I think people take that wrong. And I do want to be clear, like shining a light on God is inv involves comedy because God was hilarious, is hilarious. And he likes a good laugh, guys. God likes good laugh. So he, sh he shows up here every day to enjoy our comedy. You know, that's why people are under like, geez, God's with you every day of the show. I'm like, you darn right. He's darn tootin' looting. You darn tootin'. God's here getting a laugh, enjoying some 432 healing music, you know, and also the powerful, passionate truth that comes out. It's being delivered from the almighty. We all have that gift. If we can connect to the moment, we'll be speaking the words that intention wants us to speak. Uh, most of us have a hard time getting there, and we're always trying to pre-plan what we're saying, and it comes out horribly. You know, there's only one way to be authentic. It's, a, it's to allow that moment to breathe. Full expression is allowing your soul to breathe. And that's our goal, really. The breath of God, Yahweh, is... Yeah. Every time I breathe, I'm saying his name. I'm saying the Creator's name. You're saying the Creator's name. It's the most beautiful interpretation of the truth that I've ever found. And it was on a video that I came across that. Every time I breathe, without in trying, I'm saying the word Yahweh. Every single breath. My first breath and my last breath are saying the word of God, saying God's name. And no matter how you feel about it, so are you. You're not trying to. You're breathing. But those, that breath has... And it, there's there's something there if you listen to it. It's not just noise. It's not just wind. You could breathe in and out through your nose, but you open up your mouth, you're saying the word Yahweh. It's crazy. And yeah, it may be really, really dull to consider that. No, I'm just breathing. I'm not saying anything. But no, that, that word is formed regardless of your attempt to try to stop it. And so that's beautiful. That's beautiful. God has a, an amazing sense of humor. I absolutely agree, Deb Denny. You know, we're, um, we're just light beings here, you know, and we're trying to figure out how to get through this time together. And the hurdles that are put up are designed uh, specifically to do the job they're doing. You know, when we were kids, my parents would say, just, you know, don't, don't talk about politics, religion, or money. You know, when you go out to a party or at a cocktail party, don't talk about religion, politics, or money. Then you fast forward 2024, and that's all we talk about. Religion, politics, money, personal preferences, sexual preferences, uh, things that are not supposed to be discussed in public because we divide over these topics. What my father and mother were implying when they were saying this to me is, hey, Mark, there's millions of things that you're going to get along with when you talk to people. Talk to them about any of those millions of things. Just don't talk about these three topics, these five topics. And then we live in a world where the social media platforms only indulge you with those three to five topics because that is what creates more views for them so you stay on their platform. And for some reason, that if it bleeds, it leads, thing works. People want to hear and go right to the destruction, the devastation. That's why when you're on the highway and you're like, what, why is there traffic? Why is there ever any traffic? And then you get close and you see there's a car ac or accident. There's a wreck. And everybody wants to see the destruction. Everybody wants to slow down and see how bad it was. And see how, what kind of view they can get of the total destruction that just took place. It's just the reality of life. That's why they say positivity takes so much longer to take hold. Because people just don't care about feeling good. They only care about seeing people suffer. And I don't know what that is. Maybe that's a part of the evil in this world. 
But I came across something amazing that Sage said in my in the response to my Romans 13. And he mentioned how, and I forget which part it was, it may have been from Corinthians or from um, Mark maybe. He had quoted a few different verses. But it talked about how the world is evil, like that there's evil in the world, in the day. The day is evil is the way it was said. And I'm like, oh, man, that's exactly what my speech said like three weeks ago, that like this world, every single day of existence, it's evil has ruled the day. And that's exactly what it said in the Bible, is that the day is evil. Like there is the devil at all times tempting and just controlling the day. And God is the minority in this scenario, which is why the story is so much more amazing when good prevails at the end. Because we are, in the eyes of the world, the weaker of the two. In the eyes of the world. But you've never felt the positivity that comes through my soul. And I, could, I swear I could heal people with it. I swear, when I'm sitting in front of someone and I'm feeling what comes out of my heart and my soul, like nothing can stop that. I'm not a big guy. I can't take down Vin Diesel. I can't take down The Rock. But you, you put me in a room with someone and it's their faith and belief and me sitting in that same room, I will blow them out of that room. There's nothing more powerful than that feeling I have in my chest every single time I'm live. And that's, that's the grace of God that joins me. And it joins you. Question is, do you give him the gratitude for it or do you decide to think that you're so special? I don't think I'm special at all. I've got the grace of God that I've been lucky enough to connect with after 40 plus years and going live for five years in a row every single day in this moment where God is. For a long time in this five-year run, I'm here and he's watching from the sideline, probably getting a kick out of me because I'm just doing it. I'm just here. I'm doing it. I'm trying to bring the world together. He's probably just laughing. But at a certain point, he decided to sit with me. He decided to come here and be a part of what we do and allow his magnificent energy and love join with mine and see if we could affect real change in the moment. So after five years in a row of doing that, I feel comfortable allowing vulnerable moments to take place, telling you about getting bullied by two guys in seventh grade. Most people wouldn't share that stuff. Those are high moments in my life, guys. Those are the lowest of the low that I've experienced in my life. But I find that there's learning lessons to share when I speak about them myself. So I continue to explore guess who I am in order to understand who you are. We have to be willing to share the things that make us feel small in order to heal ourselves. So, this 1775 Bible is a source of strength for this longest running streak on earth. And I know I'm, it's just a book. You know, everybody wants to know where can I get the book. You can get the book. You can get the book. But the Stephen Howell side of this it inspires me. It inspires me every time I look at it and I realize a Revolutionary War soldier read this book to his kids. All of their names are here in the genealogy. There is a, a soul of fight attached to this. And it just so happens that the current owner is somebody who's trying to do the same thing. I'll stand alongside anybody who's willing to fight against the evil of this world. At the time, it was George Washington. Today, I don't know. You guys know I'm live. Send them my way. I'll join anybody who wants to fight against the evil of this world. We all do it in our own way. I do it with that guitar. I do it with my comedy. Some people do it by reading this, like Hilly Billy. We'll read you the scripture. He'll give you some more insight, some context. I really ask questions here because I'm a novice with this. I own it. I'm not a novice with that guitar. I'm not a novice with how I feel and expressing that to you. I'm sure you could tell. 
I'm not a novice when it comes to creating comedy in the moment. What I'm a novice at is taking a book from 1775, 1776, and pretending I know what they meant at the time. All I'm willing to do is read it to you and then try to reflect and react in real time. And then I hope someone smarter than me that's actually studied this already, like Ronnie, Sage, our family member here, to go in and, and either correct me or add more context to what I said. But the key here is, oh, cool, 1775 Bible. Let's see what it says. Let me see how I can add some more color to this conversation. Please think about it that way. I'm, I'm, I hope you, anybody who's come across this and people who do come across it going forward don't get the impression that I think I'm some sort of theology master. I'm not at all. I'm a passionate person that has his own theology. And a spirituality that I think is something we should all be connecting with, but um, I'm, I'm not going to pretend I know anything about any ancient philosophies of, of other religions or even the religion that I was born into. I know what I know, and we're now digging into this. We're now going in and seeing what's really there. And like I'm getting the total context and learning a lot. It's really cool, but it's I'm learning from a 1775 Bible instead of a 2024 new NIV. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and leave a comment. It does help our channel. I'm live at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day, affecting a positive change one person at a time.